I'm here today to spark a revolution, a shift to open, a shift that can free you from the silos that you're in so you can make the connections that you need to make the world a better place. I've talked to people with big ideas all over the world, friends in South Africa, in Portugal, folks down in Panama to China. One of the things that really pains me is when I see ideas that have potential wither and die in the silos of organizations and cultures that starve them of the resources they need to be successful. We see way too much of that, don't we? Maybe you're in a silo. You're a passionate, creative person. You're here in a room with hundreds of people who can connect you with thousands of people around the world. How do you attract the people you need that make your big idea a reality? In fact, how do you attract the people you need to make your idea bigger and more successful than anything you could have imagined? That is what you want to do, isn't it? I like to hike to the top of Table Rock, which is a mountain near my home. And I will uh, inspire friends to join me by telling them, the weather's going to be beautiful, and the view is going to be gorgeous. I had a friend who recently was intrigued about going, but she wanted to know, how long is that going to take? And how hard is that going to be? You know, when she decided she wanted to go, I had to tell her how to get started. You know, meet me at the trailhead Sunday at 8 o'clock. You know, that hike turned out to be a whole lot more than she bargained for. And I had to keep her motivated by how we were going to celebrate success. I'm going to take your picture by that summit sign when we get to the top. You know, as thrilled as she was to make it to the top of that mountain, and probably off of that mountain, I was excited for her that she had connected with me and accomplished something that she didn't know was inside of her. That is so cool, isn't it? Um, I grew up in a dysfunctional family, and when I was a young teenager, I didn't know how I was going to make the connections that were going to get me out of that. There was a special person in my life, my scoutmaster, Mr. Jansen. I was a good scout. I'm an Eagle Scout. But you know what? When I was 15, like a lot of teenagers, I thought I was doing that by myself. You know that's not the case. Y'all are enjoying that. Mr. Jansen connected me here and Mr. Jansen connected me there. My success was built on a whole network of connections that Mr. Jansen made available to me. You know, as pumped as I was to be an Eagle Scout, don't you know that Mr. Jansen jumped for joy every time one of his fellows made it to the mountaintop? You know he did. I've spent a lot of my life now building networks of connections for other people to be successful. About 20 years ago, I started Capital Insights, which was a company that connected wealthy individuals to entrepreneurs that had really big ideas. One year I met this fellow, Roger DeRoe. He had this organic grocery store in Asheville, North Carolina and he wanted to grow it into a chain. I went up there and took a tour of his store, and I picked up this tomato. Wow, Roger, I mean, this is an expensive tomato, man. How do you get this price for this tomato? And he looked at me and he said, well, John, you gotta understand that half our customers have vegetarians at home, and if you're a vegetarian, that's what you eat for dinner, and you're willing to pay more for a little bit better produce. Really? Hey, Roger! Why don't we grow this into a whole chain of organic grocery stores really focused on people that can live a healthy lifestyle? Let me tell you what, when people get so excited about your idea that they start to take ownership of it, you know you're really on to something. So I go and I connect Roger with investors and service providers, a whole board of directors. In fact, I became chairman of the board and we grew Earth Ferry into the second largest organic grocery store chain in the entire country. Cool! But you know what? 
If I had told my investors when we started that the most successful investment we were going to make was in a grocery store chain, they wouldn't have done it. You know they wouldn't. You know, the lesson I learned from that is, you know, you just can't predict how your big idea is going to turn out. You just can't. About 10 years ago, I started InnoVenture. And to help even more people with big ideas uh, make the connections they needed to be successful. One year, Matt Gavart from Clemson came and he presented carbon dots, which was an idea that he thought could be used to treat cancer. In the audience that day was Michael Bolick. Michael was an executive with a pharmaceutical company and he said he got so excited he looked around to see who else was taking notes. Now I'm sorry, that's kind of funny because there's hardly anybody else in this room that has an idea what a carbon dot is. Um, but he was so confident in what he saw that he uh, started a company, Sela Technologies, he licensed this technology from Clemson, he left his job to go see if he could make anything of it. Now every entrepreneur understands the irrational exuberance of that, don't you? You know how that story is going to turn out. It's going to be harder, take longer, and cost more than he thinks. It always does. So he goes and he connects with investors. Uh, the Institute of Translational Oncology Research, which is a cancer research lab, he connects with Nexus Medical Partners, a Boston venture capital firm, that connects him with Lab 21, a UK pharmaceutical company. They got so excited that they bought Sela Technologies, they partnered with the research lab, and they created the Clinical Genomic Center. They can biopsy a tumor in your body, sequence the DNA, and make a personal drug recommendation for you. Amazing, isn't it? That is so cool. What's really amazing is then Lab 21 decides that they want to be in the diagnostic business, not in the clinic business, so Michael gets the chance to buy his company back as Sela Genomics, and now he's going to build a whole chain of clinical genomic centers all across the country. Wow! But you know, the lesson from that is success is not you going out and proving that your first idea is right. Because you know what? It's probably not. Success is you going out, putting your idea out there, making the connections you need, having it grow bigger and more successful than anything you could have possibly imagined. That's what success looks like. A few years ago, I did a documentary featuring Virginia Aldrich. She's the founder of the South Carolina Governor's School for the Arts and Humanities. She inspired people to join her on her journey by telling them she was going to build one of the best public art high schools in the country and perhaps the entire world. She got the legislature so excited that they actually funded her school. She went out and, and recruited a preeminent faculty, people who were out-of-the-box thinkers at the top of their field. Her ballet teacher was Stanislav Isoff. He danced in the Bolshoi. He won the Nijinsky Prize as the best male dancer in the world. How'd you like to have somebody like that on your team? I looked at Virginia and I said, Virginia, how do you balance the creative tension of being out of the box while being accountable for results? And she looked at me really pensive, like maybe that's the first time she'd ever thought of that. And she said, I'll tell you what I did. I told him what he had to give me for me to attract the resources for this school to exist. In other words, that's the map. He had to give me that. He gives me that and I'll build him a stage for his kids to go to the mountaintop. Wow! There you go! That is how you do this. I am here to spark a revolution. I have made a shift to open. InnoVenture has become InnoVenture.com, a web platform that can help people all over the world make their big ideas a reality. And we can connect them together into a global network that can make the world a better place on a scale never before possible. Now you make a shift to open. Invite people to your journey. Inspire them with your vision of what the world can be. Give them a map of how to get there. Tell them how to get started. And be sure that you celebrate success to keep them motivated. Because you are a passionate, creative person with a big idea about how to make the world a better place. And that is what you want to do, isn't it?